Coming up on Pet Heroes, a canine police officer gets between his partner and an armed criminal. And a young boy struggling with autism makes an important new friend. Hello, I'm Jason McCoy, and welcome to Pet Heroes. One kind of relationship that can develop between human and animal is that of a partnership. But what effect can that partnership have, and how can it lead to life-saving results? We look at two inspirational partnerships and the lives they change. Calgary Police Services Officer Sergeant Bill Dodd was born and raised in Calgary, Alberta. After a brief stint working for an oil company, he decides on a career in law enforcement. With six years experience as a police officer under his belt, Bill successfully joins the service's canine unit, a specialized unit that utilizes dogs trained to track and contain suspects, sniff out drugs and explosives, as well as finding missing persons. That's the kind of policing that I enjoyed, was going from call to call to call. Um, you know, uh, driving fast and doing all the exciting stuff. Um, I also, you know, had always had a love of dogs and animals and uh, just seemed like a perfect fit. During his training, Bill works with a half a dozen dogs, but none have all the attributes of a working canine dog. The canine unit sends Bill and another officer to check out two new candidates. One of the dogs was a big, strong, healthy looking, excellent looking dog, and the other one was kind of a really emancipated, skinny, tall but skinny dog that looked like nobody had fed him for a while. And uh, So of course he picked the one that looked better and looked a little bit bigger and stronger, and uh, so I was left with the, the other one, and that turned out to be Odin. And looks were deceiving, because the day we opened the door of that kennel, we knew we had something special there. If we were looking for an edge, we found an edge, he had it, and that's what we were looking for. He was uh, originally from the Czech Republic. He'd had some basic obedience training, um, and all that had been done in Czech. I started off with the Czech commands, um, but over time, uh, quickly, he learned English before I could learn the Czech. Canine dogs are uh, with their handlers 24-7. They work with them, they come home, they're your responsibility at home. Odin was quite an exceptional dog. You know, at work, he had quite a reputation on, on the force. He was fierce, he was ferocious, he was aggressive, and yet at home, he was probably the perfect family pet. He was a really good pet, and I can't, I can't remember a time in my life when he wasn't somewhere by me, or at, I knew, I didn't know where he was. After four months, Odin graduates, and he and Bill begin their shifts with the canine unit in January of 1999. Over the next four years, Odin racks up the arrests and establishes himself as a valued member of the force. Dr. Connie Varnigan, a professor of psychology at the University of Alberta, teaches advanced courses on the human-animal bond. The aggression is trained. It's not that this is an aggressive dog. This is a dog that is trained to act aggressively. If he were an aggressive dog, he wouldn't be skinny little scraggly dog to start with. He would have been big and fat and aggressive. So, you know, it's all in the fabulous training that our police forces give to the dogs and, and between the dog and the handler. In March 2004, Bill Dodd returns for his first shift with Odin after two weeks vacation. Several members of Calgary's canine unit are away attending the funeral of an Edmonton canine officer killed in the line of duty. We were a little short on the street that night. There was only myself and another canine guy working that night, which for a, a night shift, there's usually more than two, but that night there happened to only be two. Over the radio, Bill hears a report of shots fired and officers in trouble. K912. I immediately switched over my channels to that uh, district, and they were, of course, now calling for K9 and tactical unit assistance to uh, help locate uh, the suspect in, in, that had fired the weapon of the police officer. 
who was now out and hiding somewhere. Upon arrival, Bill is briefed by the other canine member already on the scene. The suspect who fired on police has been contained within two blocks of his last known whereabouts. But he could be anywhere amongst the houses, garages, and vehicles in that area. Bill and Odin lead a small tactical unit on the search for the felon. It's a rough area, kind of a rundown area. There, uh, there's lots of obstacles and uh, hiding spots around there, very poorly lit. The armed suspect is not only known to police, but has a history of drug use and violence and has already demonstrated a willingness to use deadly force. And I had no doubt that uh, he was extremely dangerous. As we were getting ready, what was going through my mind was that uh, uh, there had been a funeral earlier that day for a policeman who had been killed. I'm going in now. And the policeman had just been shot at. Luckily, he was uninjured but it does make you keenly aware of the risks of the job. I also had um, the utmost confidence in Odin. Um, I, we've been in a lot of scrapes together before. Odin has much, much better sensitivity to sights and sounds and smells, even, even in a dark environment. So he's able to see a lot better. He can hear a lot better. He can smell the bad guy. He's out there as a super strong stimulus detector. They can pick up on very, very subtle stimuli very quickly. They're much quicker at processing sensory stimuli than we are as humans. It's probably smelling him. Um, he might be hearing him. Heightened, heightened hearing. All he's doing is queuing on, find the guy. That's all he's thinking about. That's all that's going through his head. Tactical members would uh, provide me uh, cover and uh, back up and watch my back. My job is to watch the dog, theirs is to watch everything else. As the team moves ever closer to the armed suspect, it's questionable as to whether Bill and Odin's team can bring him in without engaging in a Wild West shootout. After the break, when Sergeant Dodd and the other officers find themselves in the line of fire, it's up to Odin. K-9 team Bill Dodd, his longtime partner Odin, and their tactical support inch closer and closer to an armed felon hiding out in a dangerous Calgary neighborhood. I could tell by Odin's body language that um, he had what we call winded somebody. Wendy McClellan, a doctor of veterinary medicine, offers her unique perspective on animal behavior. German Shepherds really are an incredible breed. They're both highly intelligent and physically very strong. As police dogs, their high prey drive is utilized by officers just like Bill Dodd to help locate and subdue criminals. As Bill and the tactical team follow Odin's lead, the police helicopter circling above reports that they have located an infrared heat source in the very same yard. Got a hot spot, uh, one yard, the duplex where you guys are at the corner of, uh, on the far south side of the duplex, right up next to the building in the fence. I got a hot spot in the backyard. That's the hot spot they've become concerned with right there. But again, it's a hot spot. They're not quite sure what they're seeing. And Odin's pulling on the leash and coming back and pulling at the leash, trying to get some tension in that line so he can move forward. I got into a position where I thought I could deploy Odin and he could um, get a good idea of who was in that yard. From the tension in the line and from what I could feel, uh, I said to the guys that were with me, he's in the backyard, he's in the backyard, the suspect's in the backyard. Uh, between us and him was uh, concealment but not really great cover. Confident that Odin has led them to the suspect, Bill and the tactical team position themselves, knowing that if they remain exposed, they could be fired upon at any moment. I felt at that point it was that they would deal with them. Um, the tactical unit members looked into the backyard and were shining their flashlights uh, at the end of their uh, uh, long guns. Uh, but one of them said to me, I don't see anything, I don't see anybody back there. It seemed like an eternity that I was leaving Odin exposed. Just as that was happening, one of the tactical unit members' flashlights 
lit the suspect up in the flashlight. Bill is right in the line of fire. It just seemed to me to all be happening in slow motion. It just was too long that we were exposed. Odin made a beeline straight for the, the suspect. Odin made contact with the bad guy's right arm, which he was holding the gun in, and the tactical unit member saw the gun. So he said, dogs got him, guns down. Dogs got him, guns down. We got the bad guy, partner. Nice work. Miraculously, the suspect is taken down without any shot being fired. If we can resolve these situations without resorting to lethal force, um, of course, you know, that's, that's what we want to do. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. In this particular incident, it worked out, couldn't have worked out better. In 2008, at the age of 10, Odin retires from the Calgary Police Service's canine unit as one of the longest serving dogs with over 300 arrests. Unable to imagine himself continuing in the canine unit without Odin, Bill transfers to another division of the police service and buys Odin's license from the city. He was very good with the kids. I mean, the kids were young. You know, my little one would you know, go after him with the barbecue tongs, or the kids would paint him. He was just amazing in what he was able to do. You know, his focus, his drive. It's like he had a sixth sense and partnered up with my husband. Like, they were just an incredible combination. Odin was unique in that he was able to be very aggressive on the job, very physical, yet gentle and calm at home with Officer Dodd and his family. This is usually not the case with dogs of this nature. He had a Jekyll and Hyde personality. He was all business when he was at work, and he was a, a really gentle, uh, loving pet when he was at home. Odin is uh, passed away in January of this year and uh, it was hard on my family and I. We, we developed a close bond. You know, we miss him, but uh, yeah, he's a hero in our eyes and we'll always fondly remember him for sure. Next, a single mother finds hope for her autistic son in the form of Chloe, a beautiful black lab. just saw how one incredible partnership made the difference between life and death for Officer Bill Dodd. Next, we look at another special partnership and the dramatic impact this relationship has on a child and his increasingly desperate mother. Tannis Shaw Jensen is a single mom living in Medicine Hat where she's raising her seven-year-old son Caden and her four-year-old daughter Marlon. Chloe, a three-year-old black lab, is the latest addition to the family. Chloe is like my third child. This is my picture right here. Me standing by grass and flowers. Does it have a wind coming down? Caden uh, was diagnosed with ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder, four years ago when he was three years old. Autism is a neurobiological disorder. It is not a mental illness. Um, it is not a genetic condition. It um, affects neural pathways in the brain. Uh, three identifying characteristics of autism is uh, delays in communication, social ability, and sensory issues. Um, is white in one is white. For Caden particularly, um, he has auditory and visual sensory issues, so he's very overstimulated by too much. Um, he cannot articulate his um, emotions, his feelings well, and he's very socially inept. Rexer! Rexer! Rupert? Rexer! Rexer? The Rexer. Whiskers? Yeah, Rexer. Oh, yeah, right, Thursday you have. Yes. If I am talking on the phone and the TV is on and he's trying to accomplish a task in the computer room or homework at the table. Um, he becomes very frustrated and he flaps his hands or shakes his head. 
used to hit himself or he would run away when he was overstimulated and um, that's very hard. I have to go. Tannis desperately struggles to calm Caden down as he goes into sensory overload. Caden was to a point where he couldn't function hourly. Um, we couldn't do anything. We couldn't go anywhere. A typical day in school was send him to school at 9 o'clock. I would come home and I would wait. I would wait for the phone call which would come about an hour later, Caden ran away, or Caden is having a meltdown. Caden is under the table screaming. <laughs> Tannis is increasingly concerned for Caden's safety as his self-inflicted injuries become more severe. I couldn't plan anything because um, Caden was running away. Caden was hitting himself constantly, so we were living in this house like a prison. It was like a prison. And um, I had to do something drastically. After reading an article on the benefits of companion animals, Tannis looks into getting Caden a service dog. So you just don't have any dogs? But long wait times and high costs prove too much for the single mom. It just seems so hopeless. You know, I needed something right away. With her hopes of help dashed, a friend of Tannis steps in with a temporary solution. So my friend, my wonderful friend, lent us Chloe for a week and we took Chloe into her house and immediately um, I could see change in Caden. Right away there was a connection between the two of them. Right away, I saw a smile on his face that wasn't, um, that was a genuine smile. It was a genuine smile. Chloe's a black lab, and black labs are known for being great with kids of all ages. They're very active, they will play and fetch and interact with the children, and they're also very kind, sweet-natured, and very patient. When we're just petting a dog, um, our stress hormones, a major stress hormone is called cortisol, um, our stress hormones decrease. Our body is, is, is relaxing, our heart rate decreases, our blood pressure decreases, we digest better. Caden is relaxed, he's able to deal with his environment a little bit easier because he's with Chloe. So Caden went to school the day after that Chloe showed up and spent the entire day in school the teachers were very lenient and let Caden talk about the dog. So just by talking about a dog, Caden was having a normal social interaction with his peers. That has never happened. But it was never intended for Chloe to be a permanent companion for Caden. And a week later, Tannis's friend returns to take her back. We had to give Chloe back. And um, the day that she left was a very sad day around my house. <laughs> Everybody was very sad. Um, Caden cried, I cried. The thing is, we weren't sure when she was coming back, if she was coming back. So that uncertainty scared Caden. He, he reverted back to his old ways. He was sad. He lost his, his friend, his only friend who, you know, could love him unconditionally, who didn't care that he was having a meltdown or didn't care that he was having a bad day or couldn't talk or, or anything. She just wanted to play with him and he lost that. And so um, he reverted back to, you know, he regressed. A trained service dog can offer so many benefits to an autistic child. They can prevent them from bolting into traffic. They are a constant companion, giving them unconditional love. They also help with social interaction. When kids come up, autistic children often have a hard time communicating, but if the dog's there, they will wait and give the autistic child the time that they need to communicate. Seeing the amazing change in Caden's life, Tannis's friend decides to let Chloe live with them full time. And, it, and again, it was, it was like the first day that she was with us. Caden had a wonderful day at school, um, a wonderful day at home. There were no meltdowns, not for those first few days. It was almost like 
I could see what Caden would be like without autism. If he wasn't affected by this disorder, I could see, I could see what he could be like. And uh, it, it was a really good feeling. It was good. Chloe was able to modulate her behavior when she was around Caden. This is a common behavior in dogs. A good example of this is with little kids. Dogs will not be as rambunctious when they're around little ones because they know they don't want to knock them over. So in this case, Chloe modulated her behavior to fit Caden's, and that's a large part of why they bonded so quickly. Caden has changed uh, drastically. He is calm, he's responsible, he's learning independence. The bad days are very rare. They're few and far between. I think she has saved not only my sanity, I think she saved this family. I don't know where we would be without her. I don't want to think what life would be like without her. Um, she's a good dog. She's my hero. She really is. A great partnership is one where both parties benefit. In Sergeant Bill Dodd's case, his partnership with Odin literally saved his life. And for Caden, Chloe's partnership offers a calming influence and in the ability to connect socially with others. In return, Odin and Chloe both receive the unconditional love and security of family.